Hey everybody, it is Billy at Be Tough Man. I am here back at the reef of all things. Uh, I had no idea that you guys would be into reefs the way you were. Uh, almost half a million views on our reef that was almost left on its own for a year. We'll talk about that. Um, I'll show you over my 25 years of reefing, the easiest way that I have learn to do reefing. It doesn't take a lot of work. Um, it doesn't take a ton of money and we'll get into it. I'll show you the easiest way to keep a reef. All right, man, let's get into it. You know, one of the things about uh, having a tank that you don't do water changes in or uh, maybe I don't know, maybe it's a low maintenance type thing where you're not checking perimeters all the time, is that there is gonna be a time when some things happen, like you get flare-ups of algae that come and go. And I think the key thing is just don't panic because a lot of times when people start seeing algaes, um, when they start seeing things that you know make their tank look less than pristine, they immediately start doing knee-jerk reactions like you know huge water changes and things that um, disrupt the biology in your tank, right? Now, this one right now, right now, as we speak, I am ha I am on the downside of a, a hair algae deal that it, I've done these before. They usually come, sometimes they come like once every year or two. And within about a couple months, a month or two, they go away. They usually go away on their own once the fuel is burned off. So, um, I just don't panic. I mean, you know, I think if you are someone that wants a, you know, a pristine saltwater aquarium, this technique of uh, reefing that I do probably isn't for you. I mean, you, if you like, if you want something where, you know, you have white sand beds all the time and there's no, there's no algae, as you can see here, we do have a little bit of algae on the sand bed a little bit. Um, I would say this is not for you and this is not for everybody. It's just the way that I've learned to do it over my years of reefing and it's worked for me. Okay. Um, so we'll take a look at some of the things. As you can see here, I do have um, torches and frog spawns and uh, hammers. Now, back in the day, I lost a tank before. I used the same method and I had a tank that was so full. These are so expensive now. But um, I had a tank at one point that was so full of these, it was like this, the whole thing. I mean, it was like, I don't know how many heads I had, I'd say a hundred, I'm not even kidding. I mean, I probably, if I can find the photo, I'll find it. But there were so many, I mean, in today's value of what they're trying to get for these things, I don't even know what it would be. Um, these tend to like uh, water with nitrate in them. Um, I think they probably do better. They also don't like to be blasted with light. Um, they, in fact, some of them grow, I've seen, had some serious growth on these where there isn't very much light at all. And for some reason they really like it. They also do better, you know, I know we talk about water flow a lot. Some of these corals do really good with lower water flow and these are one of them. Right now I have the flow pretty low and you can see there's not much movement on them at all, but that allows them to really extend, you know, outward. And so these, these tend to like lesser flow, okay? Some corals like more, these ones don't like that. Um, I did pick up a new Fiji leather in the back yesterday. It hasn't acclimated perfect yet. I'm expecting it to though over the next two days. Usually leathers, when you introduce them into a tank, the first, you know, it, when you first get them, it appears that they're not doing good. Sometimes they'll shed their coat, but eventually they bounce back. So I am more, um, looking forward to that. Um, as you can see here, these polyps, that's pretty good, right? I mean, I think that's as good as you can get. Um, now these right here are monstrous, dude. In fact, I probably need to figure something out. These belong either in the ocean or I've got to do something because these are about as big as catcher's gloves, these leathers here. And um, they're huge. I mean, the trunk on that is bigger, is about, you know, I don't know, it's bigger than my bicep. It's not saying much for me, but uh, I'm just saying those are monsters. They kind of look cool though. They have these like things that the fish swim in and out of. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, of course I have various mushrooms around the tank. Um, I will tell you that I would, the only mushroom I would avoid, these are pretty cool. I, I don't think those are mushrooms though. I think those are recordias. Is that what they call them? I could be wrong. But um, I would not put a purple mushroom. That's the, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of mushrooms. This is one that I didn't know I had. It just started growing on its own. And it's, you know, it's pretty cool. But, um, 
I would avoid the purple mushroom. And I don't know what it is, but those things grow like weeds and will actually overtake your tank. I had a tank that almost got overtaken by them. So that's the only mushroom that I would avoid. Uh, let's see, but some of these are really cool. See that right there? And I do have some algae in there. I know it's not very attractive, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know one thing too, man, I wanna to touch on this. Now I had lost, um, the power head went out or I was gone and the power went out and the water level came down and I wiped out. This thing was perfect at one point, but the water level came down and it wiped out a lot of it and now it's regrowing back really good this plate coral and the same thing with this. I lost a good chunk of these zoas. Am I saying that right? I, I lost a good chunk of these things um, and they're almost, they're coming back like wildfire. So some of these corals really like a higher nitrate, um, you know, 20, I mean, 10 to 20 parts per million, I think. It's in his parts per million. I think they really like that and um, they do really good. A lot of these corals like higher nitrates. Now this guy right here, I know a lot of people say you can't keep puffers in a reef, but this guy I picked up, man, he's so big. Um, I, it's the biggest one I've ever seen of this species right here. And I could not pass him up and he's really cool. He actually just feeds on the rocks all day. I was kind of like, man, are you gonna eat? But he just goes around the tank all day and just feeds on barnacles and stuff or whatever he can get a hold of, hold of on the rocks. <clears throat> he's got a cool personality. Um, I did pick up a coral beauty a while back, not too long ago and pretty much a, it's a beautiful coral beauty too, man. It's really orange. I've never, you don't usually see them that orange. Um, but man, that is a really pretty fish. Um, now I will say that this guy doesn't like them too much. They're not the best of friends, but anyway, that's not here nor there. That's not what we're talking about today. So I want to talk a little bit about things I do. Oh, I want to go around this way real quick. So I want to show you, of course, these hairy mushrooms are really cool. I've had a lot of good luck with those. Um, in fact, those can actually overtake a tank. And um, these are kind of closed up a little bit, but also had a lot of good luck with sea anemones. Now, I, I, on the last video, you may have seen me say that uh, I, don't, I didn't feed these that much, and I don't. I mean, I've gone months without feeding these things, and they seem to do pretty good. Um, and then other times I fed them a lot, and I can't tell the difference. But they're a little bit more hardier than people think. And I think you, people probably overfeed them more than underfeed them, if I had to bet. And I just feed shrimp. I just take pieces of small shrimp, cut it up, and I just give it to them. Um, you can see some corals there growing on other corals, some mushrooms there growing on other mushrooms. And, uh, you know, one thing about these two, I want to go back to this, that, you know, if I cut this right here, it'll start growing right here, right? Also, I've done this before where I cut it here here, here, and I make these like cookies, right? And each one of them turns into its own, you know, toast to leather. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, so, and actually, you know, these, you can get to a point too, where these almost become nuisance at some point, or you need to frag them and get rid of them. But uh, yeah, I hate, man, I just hate fragging out something so big, but it probably needs to. Okay, so let's talk about what I do do, okay? Now, I, I am not recommending this to everybody, but I will tell you that I use tap water. Okay, and that's with no additives, all right? I don't do anything, I go to walk over, I've done it for, and maybe I live in a better area, but I've gone over, and I have an RO system, I bought a reverse osmosis system, but I used it for a while, and after a while, I just didn't care. And so now I just use tap water, man. It's, uh, I just fill it up and put it in. Now, I don't know what your water's like, but for me, I've done it. I've been in here at this residence for, oh man, 18 years, and I've never done it different, so. There you go, right out of the kitchen sink. Um, now, the tank itself, I did, so I do top it off with water, right? So it loses about five gallons every, I don't know, week maybe. So, and if I don't stay up on that, the skimming doesn't work very good. You can see right here. So I have this line here that I keep like, that's where I can get it. That's where I fill it too, because if you get it too full and the power goes out, the water level will go above this and flood everything out. So you need to know like how far up you can go with the water. So that's my line that I put it. And when I have the water level there, it skims good. But when it starts dropping, right? So if I don't pay attention to it, or if I don't keep filling it up, it will not skim very good, right? Which makes the nutrients go up in the tank. Um, the water, the overflow comes down into here, the skimmer. And here I have a bunch of algae, my, you know, macro algae, all that stuff. 
And I don't know if you can see it, but let's see here. The inside of this tank is filled, I mean, to capacity with feather dusters. Those are all feather dusters right there, okay? Tons of them, man. I don't know what that means for your tank, whether that means it's healthy or not, but there is a lot. Let me see if I can get, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can get this and not drop my phone in here. But see all that in there? Those are all feather dusters, all of them. So there's a lot of uh, filtering going on down there just with the feather dusters. But I do have that. I did add a um, AC unit to this tank because I did burn down a tank when I went on vacation and our AC went out in our house. I lost a lot of corals, man, a lot. So I don't wanna do that again. I do run two, uh, I think they're 75 watt, and I have to go check. They're either 75 or 50 watt. No, no there might be hundreds uh, watt heaters here, um, the titanium heaters. You get two there and it seems like it works really good. It keeps it real steady and if one goes out and then I don't get the biggest heater I can get because you don't, if something malfunctions, you don't want it to like cook your tank. So if you use a smaller heater, you're better to have two smaller heaters than one mammoth heater. Of course, here's the flow, right? The pump that goes into the um, top, right? From here. Now, one of the things I wanna show you because I said, which I maybe shouldn't have said in my last video on, you know, what do you add? People ask, you don't add anything. You don't add any calcium. You don't add... No, hang on. I usually, now in that last year, I used not very much, right? But if you do want to add calcium and you don't want to test for it, this is what I will recommend. And this stuff works really good. Okay. Now I'm going to show you this. My wife's going to get upset if there's something dirty here. But the C-Lab 28s, people were asking me about this, and I am not getting paid for this, I promise you that. Um, these are awesome, dude. These are so good for reefers that um, don't do testing like me. Um, I really don't test anything unless I see a major problem, uh, which I haven't seen in a long time. Um, these are really good. These are calcium blocks, and they got some other stuff in there, some other, so here's what they got here. Automatically maintains calcium. Uh, strontium and all trace elements, right? So what you do is you just get one of these and you throw it in your sump or in your tank in the back. And then when it dissolves, which it does like over a few weeks, you just throw another one in. That's it. You just keep throwing them in. You can put two in there if you want. And I'm telling you, if you have corals like plate corals, you can see the edge of this coral right here. See all that white tip on all that stuff. So it's got a lot of growth to it. These things love it right? All the torches and all that stuff. They love that stuff. So, um, yeah, man, they, they, those things are really good. I usually keep one or two in my sump. You can see them down here intermingling with the, uh, all the feather dusters down there. And I don't even think about it, man. I just throw it in. That's it. I don't even think about it. And it's always been like that. So that is easy to do. It's not very expensive. And if you're not into testing for calcium and you're not trying to like target. Now, I don't know if that would work on like a SPS tank. I, it probably doesn't. I mean, you probably have to really maintain all your stuff a little bit more, but with this kind of tank, um, you definitely can get away with that. Or if you're into softies or if you have like, you know, easy to keep plate corals, um, some other stuff like that, you know, you should be good with that. Just use those C labs and that'll help. Um, the lighting that I use, I'll kind of pick this up. I don't know if it's going to work. The lighting that I've always used I haven't always, I, I picked it up about four years ago. Uh, China makes these LED lights. It used to be on a uh, timer that I could program different settings throughout the day, but they don't make the app anymore. So now I'm kind of just on, you know, adjusting it. And of course you can adjust. It has a really nice spectrum that you can do. And the corals seem to really like it. Um, you know, really pops the colors on a lot of stuff that we have here. Yeah. And I've had no problems with these. There's no heat um, at all. And I was able to build them into this canopy here. So yeah, nothing hard, but I've really liked those and it, it cut down on our energy bill quite a bit. Um, so water changes, as I mentioned before, don't really do them. Uh, there's really no need to. I don't think so. I mean, some people will argue if you're replacing, if you're doing a replacement on you know, if you're if you're you're using those C labs or whatever, and those things are adding things to your tank that it needs, and you know you're just getting and your your skimmer is working correctly, um, you shouldn't need those. You shouldn't need those too much. Um, 
you may, you shouldn't need to water change too much. Um, I will say though that some corals may not like nitrates. So it, it, a lot of it, as people mentioned, it does depend on what you decide you want to keep, right? But you know, having your skimmer working correctly, and uh, I think if there is one thing that I wish I did have it would be a uh, like a water, like a thing that keeps the water steady. That would be nice, because then I really could leave for like a few weeks and it'd be all right. Because this tank, I'm telling you, with all the stuff that is in the tank, a lot, most of these fish, I think the clowns would be a little bit different, but they can go quite a while without eating. Um, there's a lot that you can see right here. See the puffer, he just like eats on things in the tank. I, I put shrimp in there and all kinds of stuff. He really doesn't want anything to do with it. He just wants to go around and pick at all the barnacles. So that's what he does, man. He just does that all day. Um, one of the key things though, I want to say this because if someone, if you had to ask me, okay, what's the one thing would you say in your, all your years of reef keeping, would you say is the most important, you know, so he's just cool, man. Isn't that guy cool? Um, I would say live rock, lots of it more than you think. Like the one thing, cause you know, that is your bio, that's your filter, man. That is how. That is what filters everything. And when ammonia spikes happen, the, the, all that rock, not only did I pile up, you know, rock, there's tons of rock in here, man, right? I mean, you can see it. It's all, I mean, it's all over the place, right? Not only is there tons of rock in here, but I created a 3D background, which you probably, you can see right here. This is an overflow, right? And you can see how it curves around it. And I do have a video that I've done on that. Um, if you go to the Reef Chief, you can see that video. Uh, how I did the 3D background. Um, but that too is like a big chunk of live rock. I mean, it's got so much surface area on it that bacterias and microorganisms are living on and, and all that stuff. I mean, it looks like a, uh, it looks like any of this stuff, right? So live rock is good. Get as much as you can. Um, make sure that you got so water can flow through it. But um, I, you know, if I had to say one thing and then get some down here in your sump, if you don't want a bunch in there, put a bunch down there, you know, whatever you do, just get as much live rock as you can. And that's really going to control a lot of your ammonia spikes or things that are dangerous to tanks. All right. right? I'm going to show you something that will save a lot of you people, man. So many people are going to be stoked when you hear about this. So bubble algae is probably one of the hardest algaes to get rid of. Hair algae is a lot easier to get rid of than bubble algae. This entire rock right here, about three weeks ago, was covered with bubble algae. I mean, everything, you couldn't see the rock, right? And now it's fading away and it's gonna go away. And one of the products that I used, um, I just researched it and it's this stuff. It's called Vibrant. And um, you just basically put a couple capfuls in. I put two capfuls in a week and man, dude, it does work. I think what it does is it thins the walls out on the bubble algae, which allows the tangs and other fish to eat it. It's not such a hard shell, right? But I'm telling you, man, this, if you wanna get rid of bubble algae, this stuff right here is really good. It also makes the water clear too. You should notice that. And I haven't had any, like you see, these things are doing so good right now. So I've had no bad effects to this stuff at all. So yeah. One of the products that I've had a lot of good luck with, like I said, this isn't a paid advertisement, whoops. These people don't know me and I don't know them, but I have had some good luck with this Reefroid stuff. And I use it, I'll show you how I use it. And I, it's pretty primitive probably the way I do it, but I just take a little pinch right here between my fingers like that. And I'll go over to like this guy, right? And I'll just kind of like, and I'll, 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 whoops, he doesn't like when I'm in there. But I'll just kind of like set it, you know, on him and, uh, I don't know. I just kind of spread the love. So maybe, you know, this week he gets it and maybe next week this guy gets it, but everything seems to really like that, especially these things, these oas and all these polyps. They love it. You can see them right now grabbing stuff out of the water, but uh, all that stuff seems to do really good with that. So there's one little hand. I, one more thing too. I want to show you if you are going to do an additive, one thing that works pretty good is um, this essential elements from Kent Marine. Um, you know, you can, you can take this stuff right here, put it in like once every, I don't know, three weeks, just do like a squirt or do like a cap full and uh, it doesn't hurt anything. And, uh, that works out really good. Um, you know, reefing is not something that has to be complicated. I mean, for some people that is the fun though. I get it that 
you testing, water testing, and trying to keep things that are super hard, that's all part of the game and I understand it. But for me, because I have so much stuff going on in my life that I have to figure out a way to do it where I don't have to invest everything I got into it, right? All my time in which, you know, sounds like animal cruelty, but it's really not. I mean, I've had, like I said, I've had this, I've been reefing for 25 years, man. And I remember back in the day, I was, I was from the era when you would have corals and then you would, you would bleach them. You would bleach the corals out and then you'd put them back in, right? And then eventually the tanks would crash because they couldn't keep up with the bio system, right? And they, the tanks would crash. Well, they've come a long way now, of course, and now anybody can keep a reef tank. It's not rocket science anymore. And um, yeah, so that is as simple as I can make it. Uh, I was really shocked on like how much you guys were into that last video. So I did want to answer a couple of questions and I'm willing to answer more too if you have um, any questions. Of course, this is not a, like I said, this is a very, this is a random tank with a lot of softies and a lot of familiar things here. But um, this thing's really cool, man. It looks so cool at night. But um, anyway, it is an easy tank to keep. It's all what you want to put into it. And uh, yeah, there you go, man. So there is a little update to the self-sustaining reef, almost self-sustaining. I got to do a little bit to it, but I don't freak out. And you know, it does a good job taking care of itself. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. This is Billy at BTEF.